So it is finally summer. For four months, I can stop worrying about college classes, stressing about my GPA, and contemplating on my life choices as a computer science major, and instead work on some fun side projects. Last summer, I competed in the GoGodo Game Jam and created a game that not only did extremely well for my first real game jam, but also developed it even further and released it on Android devices. Hey, what about the iOS version? All right, let me show. Actually, never mind. Anyway, for this summer, I wanted to work on something different. A long time ago, I asked you guys on Twitter what my next project should be after Little Cherry Street. And since I now have time to work on new projects, I decided to take the least picked option from my poll and create a four player 2D shooter where you play as explosive robots with water guns. Yeah, that makes sense. So this was admittedly an idea I had a long time ago while I was working on Little Cherry Street. I was thinking about making a Steam version of the game that included a local multiplayer mode where two players are trying to climb up the tree while at the same time trying to shoot the other person down. I thought it'd be a fun idea that added a nice twist to the normal gameplay. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought it'd be a better idea just to make a new game. So instead of playing as a cherry or a blueberry or a cat, you play as a cute little robot that has worse water resistance than a 2015 iPhone where touching a single drop of water makes them explode on impact. And instead of it just being a two player mode, you can play with up to four players in a match. The goal is to shoot the other players with your water guns and be the last person standing. There's a lot more I want to talk about later in this video, but that's the main gist of it. I've done a lot of planning before I even created the project to help me get this idea off the ground. And after spending all that time planning, I came to the realization that there were four problems that I'd be facing throughout this project. Problem number one, I've never made a multiplayer game before. Problem number two, I had to make the game as modular as I possibly can so it could be easier for me to add stuff in the future, like weapons and stages. Problem number three, I had to come up with an art style that was both appealing to look at and easy to make a bunch of assets for. And problem number four, I never made a multiplayer game before. I've only made one player arcade games and one 2D open world level as a proof of concept. How in the world am I supposed to make a game with four players? And I'm not gonna lie, doing research didn't help much either, due to there not being a lot of multiplayer games made in Godot, nor many tutorials that were beneficial to look at. Most of the tutorials I saw were online multiplayer, with networking, packages, clients, and things that are way beyond my payroll, and not really a lot of local multiplayer guides. This is honestly really my fault since I'm using an engine that, let's be honest, is a lot newer than the flagship engines that are out there. So admittedly, it's not really a surprise that there aren't as many tutorials out there as of the making of this video. So I'm mainly just going to have to do some good old trial and error and see what works and what doesn't. That hasn't failed me before. I'm going to start small first, so let's just talk about the basic controls. Walking and jumping were really easy to implement. I've made way more 2D platforms than I'm willing to admit, so I could pretty much do it in my sleep at this point. What was more complicated to do, however, was the shooting. I wanted the player to be able to shoot in four directions, up, down, left, and right, depending on where the analog stick is facing. Kind of like Smash Brothers, but if every move was gun. And to make a long story short, I created a function that helped check what direction the analog stick was facing when the player pressed the shoot button. It's far from perfect, but this method helps me keep track of where the player is aiming. Since we're talking about aiming and all that, I want to talk about weapons real quick. Each weapon will have unique traits and stats. At the moment, it's just this basic water gun, but I plan on adding a bunch of unique weapons with different ranges, receives different levels of knockback, and even affects your character's speed. I don't want to spoil anything, but there will definitely be a wide range of weapons in the future. In addition to your main shooting weapon, you will also have a sub-weapon, or special weapon, I don't know, I haven't decided which name I like more. These weapons can't be spammed like your main weapons. Each sub weapon has to wait a certain amount of time before it can be used. Once the time is up, you can use it whenever you want. But once you use that sub weapon, the timer resets and you have to wait for the cooldown to end again. Sub weapons weren't nearly as complicated to implement, but I think that's just because I didn't have to worry about analog positions and stuff like that. The first sub weapon I implemented was the appropriately named Bath Bomb, where the player shoots out a giant bomb that explodes after a few seconds or if it touches another player. It is far from an OP weapon, but it is definitely satisfying to throw. And the last thing I worked on for the player was to make a state where they explode into a bunch of pieces. This state is active whenever the player gets hit. It was a bit tricky to set up, but I managed to get it working. 
but with the player controls done, it was time to turn this single player debug room into an actual multiplayer game. I was just going to do some trial and error and bulldoze through local multiplayer, since there's almost no guides on how to do it properly. But since there was a lot of networking tutorials in Godot, I decided just to give it a try. Even though this was completely out of my element, I was confident I could make it all come together and my project broke three separate times. Moments like these are glad I use again. Okay, local multiplayer time. This was a lot easier to work on. After I scrapped an entirely new input system and caving in and just making a bunch of new input maps even though it looks like a complete mess. I swear just looking at this hurts my eyes. But after a week of trial and error, I was able to add four players into a single game. I was also able to add teams into the game, so that if you get shot by a team member, you won't explode. I felt like Friendly Fire made the game a bit too chaotic, but I may add a toggle later in the future. Speaking of teams, I created 8 different teams that you could choose from. Since all the weapons I plan on adding are glorified water guns, I thought it'd be cute to name all the teams based off of drinks. You got Team Water, Lemonade, Grape Juice, Orange Juice, Chocolate Milk, Pink Lemonade, Fruit Punch, and my favorite drink, Mouthwash. Wait a minute, mouthwash isn't a drink? I chose these teams mostly because they were all different colors, and made it easier to recognize who's on what team. Even though I made 8 different teams, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of them or not. I'm mainly worried about fruit punch because I'm afraid people are going to assume it's blood. But right now I think all these colors look fine. Now going back to the multiplayer, one of my biggest concerns for this game is camping becoming an overpowered method of winning. And for those who don't know what camping is, it's pretty much when a player avoids any interaction with other players to gain an advantage. This issue is most prevalent in platform fighters and FPS games, but it is a problem in any multiplayer game. A lot of developers try to solve this issue in different ways, like debuffing a character that doesn't interact with their opponents, or having a limit on how far you can move away from your opponent, but I think I've come up with a unique situation that helps solve camping. Waterfalls After 30 seconds, two waterfalls coming from both sides of the screen slowly move towards the center. They're glorified kill zones, so if you touch them, you instantly die. I figured this was an efficient way of preventing camping while making it fit the chaotic theme of the game. Okay, we have the foundation set, everything seems to be working as intended, now it's probably a good time to add some good old polish to the game. The first thing I added was a UI to show each player's lives and when they can use their sub weapons. I was originally going to talk about how I'm using arrays to store the weapon, sub weapon, and team each player is on, and sharing that data via auto loading, but I don't want to bore you guys with all that nerd stuff. Trust me, I've been holding back this whole video. Players can now also see what round they're on, along with when a waterfall is coming to the screen. So any player who is on one side of the screen has time to move away from the edge. And finally I got to work on my first real stage for the game. At this time I was on vacation and I was spending time with my family. During this time, we went to a beach and my sisters made the sandcastle, which kind of inspired me for what I wanted the first stage to be. So I ended up making this beach stage where you could jump on top of sandcastles. It is pretty simple. What well, turned out so well. You probably noticed already, but this is the first time I've made a game that wasn't a pixel art art style. The game was originally supposed to have a pixel art art style, but I wasn't really satisfied with how it looked. So I decided to try out vector art for the first time. It was a little tricky to find an effective workflow, but I really didn't want to make 5 more sprites of the same character with different art styles, so I stuck with it. And I'm glad I stuck with it, because I am loving the results I'm getting with it. Anyway, I also made this simple menu so you could change the number of players are in the game, how many lives they have, and their dedicated teams. Again, very simple, but I guess the job done. But with that, that is everything I've been working on for the past month and a half, and I am far from done with the game. There is so much stuff I want to add to the game before I release it to the public, but I wanted to share my current products with you guys. As I'm making this video, there's even more stuff I've added. However, I didn't want to make this video an hour long and almost never come out, so I'll leave it there. But if you guys would want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Any support is greatly appreciated. I also read every comment I receive, so if you have any suggestions, don't hesitate to ask. And with that all being said, take care, comb your hair, and I'll see you guys later.